Good morning, everyone. Hello everyone, you're on to Ask the Pediatricians Live. Um, today, Dr. Boyede will be here talking to us on newborn care. And I'm sure we're gonna have a very lovely time. Okay, um, I'd like you to share the video if you have not shared yet, invite your friends, tell everyone about what we're about to do today. Um, today's topic, like I said earlier, is newborn care. So it means you'll be able to ask any question you have whatsoever as regards your newborn. Um, congratulations to our new moms. We've had so many um, celebrations on new birth in Ask the Pediatricians. And so today is your day. You're free to ask any question you have as regards newborn. Okay, we'll invite Dr. Boyede to the show this morning. Dr. Boyede, good morning. Hi, good morning, Vera. Good morning, Haxi Pediatricians. Good morning, everyone. You are welcome to ECP Live. It's been quite a while, but it's nice for mm -hmm. us to be back this morning. Thank you for joining us. You are welcome. Okay, um, thank you. Just before we um, continue with the show, we'd like to ask that you share the video, invite your friends. It's good to have a full house when we start so that we don't have um, issues with people asking questions that we have, um, that Dr. Brady has already covered. So it'd be beautiful to have you come in, join us right now. If you have friends who just had babies, this is one gift you want to give to them. This is, um, we have questions from new, new moms and they can be really, it can be um, a confusing time. So today, Dr. Brady is here to help you, help your friends and help anyone you know. So please, please, we want you to invite everybody to start with us so that we don't keep repeating ourselves on the show. All right, we'll kick it off from here now. Dr. Boyede, yes, I welcome Mara. you again. Yeah, thank All right, you. Good. So, um, so why are we talking about newborn care today? And uh, I, I think I have an idea, but I want you to share your thoughts with our viewers. Okay, uh, thank you, Vera, for <laughs> having me. And the first thing I really want to say is we is a newborn because sometimes <laughs> people don't understand that. Uh, we usually use the technical word neonate, but we sometimes also use it interchangeably with the word newborn. So a newborn is a baby between the ages of zero to 28. That's, that's who a newborn is. And... Um, Newborns are very important. And why are we talking about newborns? Because this is the most vulnerable period of life. You know, uh, this is the time that most babies tend to die, especially in those of us who live in the developing world. And if you look at our under five mortality, uh, globally, we said about one million children, we, we know five million children will die before the age of five years. And 25% of these, 
That is, I'm talking of annually every year, and 25% of these are newborn. So we have about 1 million newborn deaths. I mean, so, and out of these newborn deaths as well, 75% of them will die in the first one week of life, you know? Wow. So, and if you also put that in the first one week of life, two thirds of those ones will also die in the first day of life. So we're talking about a very vulnerable period. And in fact, in some of our African cultures, you said that most people don't name newborns until after like seven days. It's because sometimes yes. they are not sure whether those babies are going to survive or not. And so that's really? that sometimes they deal. Yes, that is, I think it's related, you know. And, and it's true. So this is a very uh, vulnerable period of life. And that is why children generally are vulnerable under fives, especially. But more importantly, the newborns, they are the ones in Nigeria. I think we have about 777 babies dying every day, newborn babies. I mean, that's quite tragic. And so it is very important for us to know how to take care of newborns. And some of the things that causes our newborn deaths are things we know about, things that we can do something about. So this is why we are talking about uh, uh, newborn deaths, I mean, newborn care today, so that we don't want our newborns dying. We want them to live. We want them to survive. In fact, if we can prevent newborn deaths generally, we would have been preventing 25% of all under five deaths. And that's that's huge. Mm -hmm. So that's why that's we're sweet. talking about newborns today. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Berry. And this this actually promises to be good and um, a beautiful show. So, yeah. um, you the the statistics you just shared is a bit um, unsettling and yeah. i must confess we really need to have this talk so viewers i'm sure you're here already you may want to start asking your questions and um except dr Bury, they have something else she wants to share as regards um newborn care the general overview you want to give us before we ask questions before they ask questions dr Bury, would you want to do that please yeah, thank you. Uh, I'll just say our viewers, you are free to drop your questions and then we'll take them, you know, intermittently along the line. Uh, so I've already defined who newborns are and I've told us why it's important that we talk about newborns because they are very vulnerable, they are, very, they are at risk of dying. And um, what's, what are the things that kills our newborn? They are, unfortunately, some of these things start before the babies are born. So most people look at babies as okay, day zero is when they actually come out, but that baby has been existing nine months earlier. And unfortunately, some of the things that could kill that baby in that first one week or first one uh, day of life, they are things that have started happening from the womb. So we can talk about newborn and the care of the newborn without talking about the mothers, without talking about pregnancy, without talking about pregnant mothers, without talking about the preparation that the mothers need to make while they were pregnant, because those are the things that could impact on the newborn. And apart from the mothers, we, are, we can also talk about newborn surviving or newborn being alive without talking about the care that they get in that first uh, one day of life. and. Well, yeah. That's why we talk about that. Babies must be delivered on that with skilled health care attendants, you know, not just, you know, we'll get to all that later. Uh, and then yeah. there are also some uh, myths or there are some beliefs that are associated with the care of newborns. And some of these things are also things that can also contribute to the, to the death of the newborn. So these are things we would really need to talk about. But you are free to drop your comments, your questions, and I'll just take them along the line. Right now, I don't have any comments, questions, uh, but as they come in, and we'll, we'll take them. And I want to encourage our moderators, for those who are watching on our uh, watch party, if you have questions, that you can just help us pop them to the foundation page, because that's where we'll be able to see the questions. All right, so what are the things that kill newborns? Okay, I'm sure Vera, you're interested in knowing that. And now- oh, the, I'm, the, just, the, I'm, I'm a bit on set I feel really, really- <laughs> Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, um, the, the, the what kills newborn will vary whether depending on which part of the world that you are living. Uh, so, for those who live in 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 a developed world, they 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 tend to normally make newborns die for them is prematurity when babies are born so early and all that. But for those of us that live in the developing countries, apart from prematurity. Mm -hmm. There are other things. One of the other things that tend to kill our babies are what we call birth asphyxia. I mean, that is when babies yeah. don't cry at birth, you know, because that first yeah. cry is so vital, it's so important because when a baby is in the womb, it is the mother 
technically breathing for the baby. The baby is just getting the oxygen from the placenta. But when the baby is born, the baby's lungs need to start working. The baby needs to start taking breathing for him or herself. So if a baby doesn't breathe, oxygen doesn't get into that baby. And the brain is a very sensitive organ. Within four minutes, the brain doesn't get oxygen. The brain begins to die. And it is a permanent yeah. thing. So the, wow. and some babies have it so bad that not some babies can survive, but they will have disabilities. But some babies don't even make it at all. So breast asphyxia is one of the common uh, top five causes of newborn deaths. We've talked about prematurity. Mm -hmm. When babies are born too early, anything before 37 completed weeks is what we call prematurity. But the the earlier the baby is born. It, the, the, the risk here for that baby to die. Babies that are born before 28 uh, weeks, especially babies that are less than one kilos, they are the ones that tend to uh, have that uh, uh, that kind of challenges. So, so those are the things that can cause uh, babies to die, you know. And of course, infections generally are also part of the uh, things that can lead to newborn deaths. And so. Um, uh, especially those of us in this part of the world. Uh, and some of those things are related to our practices, you know. And then there are some yeah. conditions, in, yeah, there are some conditions that even in other parts of the world has been eradicated. Things like newborn, like neonatal tetanus. You know, no baby should be mm -hmm. dying from tetanus because we have tetanus vaccine. But you, you'll be surprised that we are still having neonatal tetanus yes. in this part of the world. And I will yes. tell you how we have it because of the kind of practices. These are things that are preventable. Infections, mm -hmm. you know. And of course, uh, we, uh, the infection is also what we refer to as sepsis. Then there are some conditions like jaundice, if severe, if not treated on time. And those are the things that can, you know, lead to newborn deaths. And, and it is very important that people are aware. And, the, and of course, sometimes babies are born with some uh, congenital problems. You know, maybe the heart was not properly formed, the brain was not properly formed, or, you know, and some of those uh, deformities or abnormal formation of some organs of the, of the body, they need to be picked up on time. And if they are picked up on time yeah. and they are addressed, then those babies will not likely die. So these are things that are responsible for the death of the babies, and these are things that mothers must know, and if possible, we need to see what we can do in preventing them yeah thank you okay that's pretty yeah I'll, I'll i'll take you back a bit when you talked about um babies not crying so is there anything that the mother should have done or or the doctors or whoever should have done to encourage or ensure that babies cry i mean how can what 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 is the average mother's role as regards that all right um it's a complex there are many things that are responsible for a baby not crying as well so that's why i say we need to talk about it from a pregnancy so the care of a newborn baby starts before the mother even gets pregnant you know okay. so it is not even when you are pregnant so if you are going to be pregnant and you don't want your baby to be one of our of the statistics of that you need to prepare for pregnancy unfortunately in some of us in the third world people don't prepare for pregnancies yeah, you know it just happened. yeah that's <laughs> it happened <laughs> once you get pregnant they once you get married then you're supposed to just get pregnant no but in other places before you actually you plan so people are actually on contraceptives and things like that then when they are ready to have a baby then they'll go and see their doctor they have what we call the prenatal uh, as appointment mm -hmm. for assessment and for counseling. Mm -hmm. So that if the mother has some medical issues and things like that, they, they will try and um, uh, address it before she gets pregnant, you know, and mm -hmm. things like that. So these are very, very important things, which unfortunately most people in part of the world, they don't do. And for example, some mothers are what we call high risk pregnant women. So a mother with a pre-existing medical condition, a mother with hypertension, a mother with diabetes, a mother with yeah. sickle cell anemia, uh, you know, a mother who already has heart diseases, kidney diseases, these are people that when they are going to get pregnant, they they, 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 they are already starting on a high risk level. And the doctors need to know, they need to advise them, they need to monitor them. So these are things you should do before pregnancy. And women, there's a certain weight, there's a certain, um, uh, eyes you must have or you to be able to take in, you know. So, I know this is everybody that. wants to be, yeah, everybody wants to be so uh skinny and all that, but there's a certain weight you must have for you to carry a baby. Usually, we want you to be at least 50 kilos before you get pregnant. Well, 
<laughs> yes, and and there are ages that are also high risk ages for pregnancy. Yes. So mothers below 18 and mothers after 35. So if you are in those age category and you want to have a baby, you need to see a doctor because you are in the high risk age group because these are the things that can lead to such mothers, uh, babies uh, dying at um, at birth so such mothers need to see their doctor so so these are just examples of of uh, what should be done before you get pregnant now after you've gotten pregnant then you really need to make sure that you have um uh you, you are registered for antenatal care and antenatal care people always ask us when should we start antenatal care and all that uh i know the gynecologists usually say once you have like uh uh, also confirm you're pregnant at least eight weeks so you can go start antenatal care i know there are some others that are veterans they think that they know it all they've had two three weeks so. to five months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they will even go on to delivery day <laughs> and you know the truth <laughs> of the matter is that every pregnancy could be different and so True. you could yes, it work for you on the other one might not just yes. work for this one exactly and so you need to register for antenatal and antenatal care is not prayers it is not anointing oil because there are churches and mocks and nursing okay. homes that do antenatal care and when 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 they say they are going for antenatal is they go and pray and drink holy water mm -hmm. I'm a Christian, mm -hmm. so I have no problem with uh, prayers. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> but we need to know what is um, proper and what is what is not appropriate. And so you need mm -hmm. to see a doctor. And what the doctor is actually doing during antenatal is to assess the risks of your pregnancy. And so they will they will probe you whether you are high risk pregnant or low risk or you know moderate risk pregnancy. So those are the things that the the, the doctors will do. And so there are some bit, some low risk pregnancy. Even the midwives can handle that. And for the high risk pregnancy, they they may need to even not only be managed by just like a general doctor. They need like a specialist uh, gynecologist, obstetrician to and to them. You know. So those are the things that uh, yeah, that antenatal care. And there are some basic packages for antenatal care. So the you know mothers should get so things like tetanus injection for example things like for those yeah. in nigeria anti-malaria malaria prophylactic treatment those are things that yeah. they need to do and even for um uh, uh, uh nutrition counseling um all those things that they need to be sorted blood pressure checking blood sugar yes. monitoring to make sure the mother doesn't have diabetes hypertension things like that urine checking for infection because urinary tract infection is one of the reason mothers come up with um have pre preterm deliveries and you remember that prematurity is one of the things that could lead to uh deaths of of those babies so those are the things mm -hmm. that and senator care should be sorting out and they also, they also plan deliveries whether can this one mother have a normal delivery or can this mother need a cesarean section and yeah. I, I know there are lots of people listening to me uh there's nothing evil and there's nothing um uh, I, i'm trying to choose my words carefully you're not human enough you're no you're not woman enough no, no, no. There's nothing on spiritual about having a cesarean section. I believe that God oh. gave doctors wisdom, and if that's the if that's the only way you're going to have your baby, you don't have to feel stigmatized. I know there are some cultures that believe that um, uh, you must prove yourself as a woman. Please, you don't need to prove no. yourself to anybody. At the essence of your life and of your baby and i said mm -hmm. everybody that every delivery is a miracle once your mother is alive the baby is alive that's the most important thing for us uh, some some people yeah. prove themselves they are alive the baby is alive because you know you go to church you hear a lot of testimonies but then maybe mm -hmm. have a lot of yeah the baby have lots of medical challenges i'm a developmental pediatrician so i see those babies with disabilities and mm -hmm. we do if you can prevent it because it's a lifelong thing if you can prevent it we want to prevent it so these are the things that we we need to do so so those are the, so delivery needs to be planned 
and delivery should be on that scale. You can have your delivery at home, you can have it in, but the most important thing is that it is supervised. So in other parts of the world where they are so advanced, the midwife can come to your house, the doctors can be in your house and they will do it. But in some yes. of our own parts of the world, there's, we don't have that kind of um, mm -hmm. uh, facility. So you are better off delivering your baby in the hospital under the care. And the reason why you have to deliver under the skilled uh, healthcare professional is because uh, sometimes things may be going fine sometimes things become complicated and we need mm. to uh, but a skilled person we need we know that okay this is the point that i need mm. to you know get somebody else help you know we are not perfect people everybody mm. every professional has a a, a skill set level so there's a level yeah. that you can handle then there's a level that you need other professionals to take from you and 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 oh i guess something is wrong All right, sorry. Um, I'll just have to do something quickly to get us back on the show.
All right. Um, sorry for the break in transmission. We had a few um, technical issues. Dr. Boyede. All right, good. We're very sorry. We'll continue shortly. Um, still stay tuned, get your friends to come back, and then we can see that you've sent some questions on the watch party. So we'll be taking them from the watch party to the live show. Dr. Boyde. Okay, yeah. Can okay, you hear back. Me? Okay, yeah, cool. back. Yes, that's beautiful. Yeah, thank you all for staying tuned. Dr. Boyde, we have some questions at the watch party. Okay. Is it okay if I just okay. take questions from the watch party now? Yes, we can. Maybe we should just do that since um okay, so Constance Chin Chindo Chofolu is saying, Good morning, Doctor. What is the cause of jaundice in newborn and the cure? This is from <laughs> Constance Chindo Chofolu. She's okay. on the watch party. Yes. Uh thank you. Uh, uh just a minute, I think I'm hearing my stuff. Okay, so the, if you want to talk about John Day, I mean, it's so complex. So I think we'll just um, take that as a separate topic on it or so. Um, there are so many things that are called John Day. Okay, I, I think we've lost your, your audio. No, we've lost your audio, Dr. Wimmy. No, at all, no. We can't hear you. Somehow we lost your audio. All right, so, okay, Dr. Boyede is, um, she'll join us shortly. She needs to sort some technical issues. Okay, um, someone asked about journeys. Dr. Boyede was gonna attend to your question. so. However, um, I would also say that you could go on the group wall. We've had so many group discussions and questions and answer sessions on jaundice. So you, you could get that. I think Dr. Berry is going to come back now. Okay. No, we still can't hear you. All right, um, I'll say in them, so that question on journeys, please um, go on the group wall, use search for topics or use the search engine and then ask journeys in children. You see loads of materials, lo loads of articles, group discussions that we've had concerning journeys. Um, Dr. Boyde will join us shortly, but I'll just um, say this. Ask the Pediatricians is a Facebook group and we have a Facebook group where our professionals have attended to loads and loads of questions for everyone. So you want to just go there, um, um, ask the pediatricians. You, we, we are a, a, over 500,000 um, group, group members. So I'm just saying that so you know which of the groups I'm actually talking about because we have some other people who have cloned that group as well. So um, hello, go there, search. You will find answers to many of your questions. But for today, we want to stay put with what we have, which is um, newborn care. So you may want to just ask questions related to that. Vera, can you hear back. me now? 
Absolutely. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, I'm yes, very I sorry <laughs> for all the technical you issues that. we had you today. I'm sorry well about that. Yeah. Okay. So I was asking a question about John Dees, and somebody is asking about the cost of John Dees, and I'm just saying that that topic is a whole topic on its own. Yeah. Okay, there so, are so many causes of jaundice, and we can't just if you take jaundice as a cause, it will say whole topic on its own. It will just take the whole day. So I think we should just leave that topic for now. But just know that yeah. it is important that newborns are checked for jaundice before they leave the hospital and that is one of the reasons we don't discharge newborns on the first day of life in the in some advanced countries where they have what they call head visitors midwives visiting the newborn babies at home they can check the babies at home for those for jaundice and all that but most of us here yeah, we don't i mean when i say here i mean those of us in nigeria and some other african countries may not have that uh, uh facility so it is important that the uh, the baby is checked for jaundice before leaving the hospital. And so most pediatricians will, will not discharge your baby until the third day of life because most of those serious jaundice would have shown up by that time. So that's one of the important reasons uh, because if jaundice, jaundice itself is not a problem, but the challenge with jaundice is that if it is not treated on time, it can cause brain damage or death. So it is important that it's picked up and that it is addressed on time. So that's basically uh, what we're talking about. Okay. All right. Well done, Dr. Meride. Thank you so much. And good to have you back. Someone is asking if fair dollar in May or bong. She's saying what can happen to a child that the mother did not take any medication during pregnancy? She wants to know, well, of course, um, Dr. Boyd has talked about this. Said she says, "What can happen to a child if the mother did not take any medications during pregnancy?" Okay, uh, the mother does not really need to take any medication per se during pregnancy. Most of the medications that are given to babies uh, mothers during pregnancy are just uh, uh, multivitamins and iron supplements because. Anemia in the mother, I, I, I made I didn't mention that. Anemia in the mother is one of the things that also leads to deaths of newborns. So we just want to make sure a mother has enough blood levels and things like that. And that is why uh, uh, mothers are given those uh, blood tonic. In some places, if the mother is eating well, the blood level is okay. It's not as if it's that very compulsory, you know. So they are not like drugs, mm -hmm. like... Um, they are not like that fancy drugs. They are just drugs that uh, that help the mother's blood level and all that. So I, I maybe I'm not sure what your question is. So if a mother is eating well and she has enough blood level, even if she's not taking iron supplement, she will be fine. You know. So that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Doctor Brady. All right. Let me just. Oh, someone is asking a question that might not be relevant. Um, to this course, you're asking, please, doctor, can somebody who has um, two blockage be pregnant? Okay, that question would be for your gynecologist. So please do ask your gynecologist. Not, it's not um, really related to what we are doing now. You need to go for your checkups and all of that to be sure where you are at. I'll take a few um, feedback, Dr. Boride. So we have um, someone says, Akin Koya, thank you, Abiyo John. She says, good morning, doctor. Really appreciate your efforts. Dr. Berede, someone is appreciating you. Thank you very and, much. Um, we we have... appreciate you for being there as well. Yeah, Alawa De Olujide Emmanuel is saying, thank you for educating us timely. God bless you. And I agree mm -hmm. with this. This mm -hmm. is very timely. Thank you. God bless Dr. Berede. Thank ST you for MCM joining us. Say, well done, doctor. Blessing Oyin is saying, well done, Dr. Bimisola and Vera James. Kudos. Kudos to you, Dr. Berede. Well done. Um, okay, thank you for your feedback, everyone. We, 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 we're enjoying that. We're so seeing please that. Please drop your question as oh, well. Because yes, I can see ask your questions here. Those are the um, only three questions on the watch party. It seems everybody's just enjoying. So, Dr. Wade, while we wait for their questions, yeah. we do want to talk about some. You, you, you mentioned earlier 
that there's some myth that you want to tell us about in the course of the oh yes i think today. i would like to talk about that because especially those of us in african um, background there's a lot of myths about uh, i mean how to take care of us and i usually group them into the good the bad and the ugly <laughs> you know there are some of them that are okay and we are covering that <laughs> but there are some of them that are very, very uh, um, dangerous. And if you know us on active pediatrician, uh, our goal is to always um, correct some of this misinformation. Our goal is to make sure that you have health information that will make sure that your children are alive, they don't die. I mean, that's our passion, that's our goal. And so I'm going to talk about some of those uh, myths. Uh, sometimes I try to group them in different ways. So we can talk about myths related to breastfeeding, we can talk about myths related to the way you care for the baby, we can talk about myths related to uh, the care of the cord the, and all that. So. I will, I will try and focus on the ones that are a little bit dangerous because that's the one uh, I know there are good ones, but I, 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 I want to focus on the ones that we really need to make sure that uh, yeah. uh, they don't lead to that. And the first thing is the fact that some, some cultures believe that the mother should be able to deliver by herself. I don't know whether you know that there are some cultures where they will just put the woman in a room all alone and she's supposed to just have a baby. And nobody is going to come and see her until she has a baby. She, in fact, sometimes the woman will deliver the baby, call the cord. I mean, I've had the one incident like that. Yes, all by herself. I, I think it's commoner in the northern culture. And if you are from those kind of area, please just let just pop something in the comment for me so that I know that I'm not the only <laughs> strange person who knows Whoa. about that. But just to say that. Uh, it's uh it is important for us to know that women need help in labor and they need support and so it is not it is not acceptable for a pregnant woman to be left alone sometimes the, some women are very strong sometimes the, the pregnancy i mean the delivery was is so simple and all that but sometimes we have complicated ones and the babies will likely die and so that's one of the reason we don't want um um pregnant women delivery without being attended to they must be attended to and it's, uh, it's surprising that in some culture this is also the same culture where young girls are made to marry and have babies so early and this this i mean that is a different ball game altogether but remember what i said below 18 years is high risk pregnancy so as much as possible we want our girls to delay marriage and child birth until they are about 18 years old minimum. So please, uh, even if you want them to marry, we, we I think some places the marriage is 16, but you should at least let them wait until they're 18 and above before they start having a uh, baby. So that's very, very important. Uh, so yeah. that's about delivering the baby. And also there are some places, this is not cultural, but some people believe that they must deliver in the church, they must deliver in the mosques, or they must deliver in the, what we call the traditional the bath, traditional mm -hmm. bath attendants, the TBAs. Now the traditional bath attendants are the ones that tend to, they use a lot of herbs. They believe that they use the herbs, they rub the women, tummy, and sometimes they give some of these herbs to the babies as well. And some of those herbs tend to now lead to, um, you know, it's not as if herbs are bad per se, but sometimes some of them contain other things that could be dangerous to the baby or to the health. So, and some of them, the instrument they use is the same thing they will use for everybody. Some of them don't understand the culture of, uh, <laughs> sterilization and things like that so these days we're also training them to be fair the government is training most of especially if you are in some part of the country like lagos and all that the government tried to train them on how to do clean deliveries how to resuscitate when a baby is not breathing what do you do and things like that so but as much as possible please deliver your babies in the hospital not in the church not in the mocks not at the tbh so that if there are problems there the baby can get immediate care please and don't go and deliver with all these uh, uh, quack uh, professionals in some uh, part of the country, Nigeria, they call them auxiliary nurses and things like that. Right? The, the professional nurses are trained, they are midwives. Midwives are actually people that are trained to take 
uh, deliveries of babies. So you should go and deliver your babies with such professionals or in the hospital. But all those people that are not, ask them where, you know, don't just go, ask them where the qualification is. Before you just go and put yourself in your in, in their hands and then pro things go wrong, you know, they will just abandon you. So please, this is this are very, very important uh, information that will make sure that our babies don't uh, die. And when your baby has been delivered, uh, it is not important that a baby should be given a bath. You know, in fact, it's recommended that you delay the bath until 24 hours. So all this rushing, rushing to bath the baby, and some people will put oil, oil, they will crush mm -hmm. the baby. They will, they will, they will, um, uh, you know, use this very thick sponge to scrub the baby's, you know, the baby's skin is so tender and all that. So some of those things can introduce germs into the baby. So we want you to avoid that. Uh, usually what we just usually do is to clean them with, uh, olive oil or something for the first, uh, uh, few days, and uh, you know, and, and they'll be fine because they also, they're also losing it. And one of the things that can also keep baby is cold. Though I think we are very good with that in the sense that we usually cover. cover them. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we actually That's overboard with that. Uh, so um, mm. so you want to, so those are some of the things. And another uh, meal that tends to create problem is this meat of throwing away the colostrum. And um, some people believe that the colostrum is ceramic, that it is sad um, because it doesn't uh -huh. look white. Yeah. It looks a little bit slightly mm -hmm. yellowish, but that's the best thing for that baby at the first day of life because that is actually what contains antibodies, like a vaccine for the baby to protect the babies against germs and all that. And if you were following us during the breastfeeding week, we said that the first step, yeah. one hour, a baby should be put to breast. You don't need to wash that breast. You don't need to do anything to it. Just put that baby to the breast. The baby needs all those cells, all those things that you would think you are washing out and peeling off. They are actually things that the baby needs to their cells. They are things that stimulate the baby's immune system. So you you want to make sure that you get the baby to you know to get all those things don't worry it may look sturdy it may look like what's all this thing but actually that's it there are things that protect the baby against uh, infections and things like that so please don't throw away the colostrum it is it is not white it is still milk even though it's not white milk uh but it is a very important milk that um uh, that the baby needs in that first uh uh, a few days of life, so please don't throw them away. And babies don't need to have bath morning, have to know at night. I mean, where is the baby going? Baby is just at home, it's, it's not getting dirty. So, once a day, bath is enough, <laughs> I know. and that's quickly. Let me talk about this one that people would now. When they are bathing baby, especially my our grandmothers, shout out to all the grandmas mm -hmm. on it to be, you know, I love you so much. But look, yeah. all these ones that you people always throw the baby up and throw exactly. them down. I think I is it on Facebook I read it or something about a mother who was yeah. saying a, a, a mother-in-law did something like that and the baby died, you yes. know. So yes. I mean it, it, it is still sometimes when I say some of those things, people would like like you know, we just like to talk on ATP. But sometimes we, you see, what I don't like is when things end up negative. I don't like to use negative stories to to prove my point. Mm -hmm. But the mm -hmm. truth of the matter is that some of these things are preventable. The earlier you prevent them, um, the better. So please, if a baby, and all these massages that people do for babies and all that, they are not really necessary. I, I, I don't know why we need to massage and people think oh, if they don't massage, if they don't scrub them, they're going to have body odor, if they don't do, and I keep asking, we are not the only people in the world and we have other people, um, uh, other cultures where these things are not done and their children are alive and they're fine. So there's no reason why, you know, we should always think, how come those people don't have this? Well, I mean, so there's no base. Some of those things are just myths that people grew up with. And because they are, we grew up with them, we just keep on doing them. So please, your babies just need, their babies don't need any, um, <laughs> they, they, they don't need all those throwing up and please and when they are bathing for the baby i think one day i'm actually going to do a demonstration now thank god we now have atp life that when you when you're giving birth when you're when you're buffing a baby please please first and foremost that water 
please start with the cold water before you had the hot water. Mm -hmm. I, I've seen people trying to, I, I've worked, I'm mean, a pediatrician when I was training, we've had babies come with bonds, bonds, you understand? Hot water bonds. And what happened because they want to bath the baby, so the grandmother yeah. or whatever, I thought the mother, it is the, the mother of the baby has put cold water in the hot water, you know? Before you put any water on, baby, fill it with your hand first. Not that you just, and the, some of those water are too hot. They don't need it to be too hot. Just look warm. A little bit of cold, a little bit of warm. That's it. And always start with the cold. Because when you start with cold and you had hot, it's, it's better than when you start with uh, uh, too hot and you don't know the level. And you know, Sometimes, sometimes the, mom, the, the grandma will put her hand in the water and do this and still use that same water to burp the child. And I'm like, really? to you and you're putting this on the child's skin yeah so this is this is things that we should okay some latifa uh, is telling me that that is the infant acrobatic please <laughs> the, our babies no don't need, they don't need any acrobatic please they don't need no. any massaging no. I know sometimes, yeah, it, it, it makes them feel comfortable, but they don't really need most of those uh, things. So we should try as much as possible to um, to avoid them. So just give your baby a bath. And when you're doing the bath, bath the baby segmentally so you can wash the head first and dry it up. The way you wash your head when you go to the salon, that's the way you wash the baby's head and dry it up. Don't don't bath for the baby the way you take your own shower and you're pouring water down yeah. the whole face and all that. The baby yeah. will, will can aspirate the water they, and that it can be very dangerous. Then when you finish bathing the air, you dry it immediately, you can cover it with a cap. Then you just wipe the face with a face towel. You don't need to scrub soap and salt and everything over the face. Just a little face towel with a little water uh, or some of your soap or whatever, just, but just to dry, you know? The way you you know the way you just do dry clean or what people call dry clean, <laughs> just wipe the face or when you are cleaning off your makeup, you know that's the way you just clean the face of the baby as well. That's that's fine. Then you take the baby on your seat, on your on your on your uh, leg and sit because the baby could be very slippery. So you sit them on your on your on your tie and then you bath for them and a little by little. You, so, some people put that there's some baths that are configured that way that when you put the baby inside the bath, you can do that and yeah. the baby will be, you know. But if you don't have that, if you are the typical Nigerian mom that just has the normal bowl, you may have to carry yeah. that baby. Or if they, if it's a three months, when baby is sitting like six months there about, then you can do some of those other other things that you you are doing. So that's how to do that. Uh, just one minute, please. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, we're rounding off shortly. We we will we will leave this show another few minutes because um, it's it's almost okay. eleven. Doctor Boyde, yeah, we'll be trying to round off now. Yeah, we'll try. Yeah, I know we we had some break, so maybe we'll just give extra time to take some of those questions because of a okay, break. So okay. Fine. Okay, but we just have a comment. Okay, sorry. Let me just round up the parts about the bathing and all that. So uh, that's about the bath type. Then the uh, the last thing I want to say is about the cord care. Please, your baby's cord, they don't need to be massaged or mopped with hot water. They don't need any bandage. They don't need anything. All you just need to do is to clean it. Keep it dry. You can clean it with methylated spirit and apply, or you can apply what we call the chloexidine gel. So also apply the chlo chloexidine gel, or if you don't have chloexidine gel, you can use methylated spirit. The advantage of chloexidine gel is once you apply it once in the morning, it will work for the whole day. You don't need to apply several times during the day. Whereas for the methylated spirit, you need to use it every um for the methylated spirits, you need to use that every often. So th th that's the difference between the... Do you have any issue again? Wow, our network is a bit funny today.
Wow, it's, it's been an eventful show this morning. Um, sorry um, about the break in transmissions we've had today, but I do hope we've had a very lovely time and um, I'm very certain that we've learned a, thin, a, a thing or two. Dr. Boyede. Um, okay, just before Dr. Boyede comes in, all right, she's here. Oh, okay. oh sorry for all this. <laughs> Welcome um, back. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes, you were, you were talking about... Um, you are still talking about the myth, yes. Okay. Um, so, so we we'll ran off very soon. Sorry for all the breaking transmission. So I was talking about the cord care that you just need yeah. methylated spirits and you don't really need... Uh, you can use methylated spirits every two hours, but if you have to... Um, the advantage of the chloroacetine gel is that you just do it once and that will be all for the day and just for seven days. But if you don't have chloroacetine gel, you can still use your spirit, but for the methylated spirits, you have to do it every two hours. So that's what we recommend. Okay, that's beautiful. All right, so Dr. Brady, you've talked about cut care and all that. How about... Um... Okay, this is something we've always you've always talked about on the group, but I just thought to bring that up again. Okay. People, newborns, moms and um, parents feel newborns sleep longer when they sleep tummy down. And I'm sure you, you've told us one time or the other that that's one of the um, cases for infant um, mortality. So you want to just talk about that a bit, just clear the air and let people know that you okay, would but, always advise that yeah. sleep. Okay, so when we're talking about uh, care of the of the newborn, <laughs> sorry for that. Uh, when we're talking about um, the care of the newborn, so we normally recommend that they go back to sleep. Uh, so uh, because uh, when you put the baby down on the face, this has been associated with increased risks of newborn deaths, what we call sudden infant death uh, syndrome or SIDS. So that is why it is recommended that babies go on the back to sleep. I know most mothers, especially during the period that the babies are having colic and all that, we tend to have this um, uh, 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 belief that when you put them to their back, I mean, to their tummy, they tend to find it easier to sleep, but um, is is not recommended really. That you could, when you want, you they could stay on your tummy, or you could put them in a rocker and things like that. And when they are ready, when they've slept, then you can put them to sleep. But what is recommended by pediatrician generally is back to sleep. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Bailey. Okay. Um. Someone just Elizabeth. Olubisi um, said, well done, Maz. The first soap I used in baiting my newborn was Sebamed. Okay, we don't do names here. So two weeks after I developed like atopic dermatitis, the whole back and chest, and I changed to topic cream. Mm. Both cream and soap. Changed back to Semabeb, chair butter. There's no improvement, and it comes and goes. Yeah. What can I do? We dissolve naturally, yeah. no cream. Okay, so you need to see a dermatologist because uh, if you have followed our group discussion on atopic dermatitis on on Axe Pediatrician Facebook group, we've clearly stated that uh, most of the time there's no particular cause for atopic dermatitis. It's just that it's, 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 it can be triggered off, especially if your baby is allergic to some of those things that are used in the... Um, in the in those cream and soap so the fact that you use a hypoallergenic soap like the sebamen product you mentioned does not mean the baby can still not have atopic dermatitis the risk is less compared to when you use heavily chemical uh soap and creams and things like that so that's just yeah. basically what is that that is all about uh, however uh, if your baby is having severe rashes and is coming and going, then it is no longer a simple thing for you to address as a mother. That has now become something that a professional, usually the 
pediatric dermatologist we need to uh, address. So I would recommend that you can book an appointment to see a pediatric dermatologist for further management. Some, in some babies, it could be so bad. In some babies, there are other treatments that the dermatologists will do, like they can use cold tar, they will wrap the baby. There's so many things they do for the babies beyond just avoiding this cream, avoiding that cream, or using this cream. So you definitely need to see a dermatologist. And actually, that's a typical issue of uh, atopic dermatitis. It tends to come and go. Yeah, so that's it. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Boride. We've had a good time today learning about newborn care. We've talked about lots of things, and I, I do hope our members have gained and learned a lot from you this morning. Yeah. Um, like I said earlier on to our members, you can still invite your friends to watch this video after now. You can share it on your wall after now. You It will still remain. It will, um, it's visually saved on our Facebook page. Yeah. Yes. yes. Also, um, like earlier, okay, yeah. you can... Okay, sorry, I'll get you. You come in. You can um, join our group and then ask many of these questions. I can see that on the watch party, you're asking questions about your baby having cough and all of those. We've answered those questions, they're not particularly for today's show. So if you join our, our group or if you go on the group, you search for cough or then you look at the topic cough, you see so many things that our doctors have talked about cough. All right, Dr. Berry, sorry, you were saying something. Yeah, so, so thank you so much for everyone for joining us. I just want to say that this program has been brought to you courtesy of Ask the Pediatrician Foundation. And I just want to uh, tell people a little bit about Ask the Pediatrician Foundation. Uh, many of you know us on our Facebook group and Facebook page. Uh, but beyond what we do on online, we are passionate about the well-being of all children globally, especially those in Nigeria or, or developing countries. And our outreach we do what we call community medical outreaches and our next outreach is coming up in uh uh, in October, uh, some of them maybe first of uh, 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 October, some on the Saturday before 29th of October and all that. So we want you to support us. We'll be having house reaches in uh, Quara, in Abba, uh, in Abia says, in uh, Ogun says, and in Abuja. So if you go to our Facebook page, you will see how our yeah, you will see how you can support our our Axi Pediatrician Foundation outreach. I'll try and see if I can put up the uh, the flyer now. Yeah, so you can see on that yeah. page. Yeah, so you can support us, and we'll be very uh, happy for you to support our Axi Pediatrician Foundation uh, out medical outreach. So. Um, you can be a volunteer, I think, but I think we've closed the, uh, we've closed oh, the no, volunteer. We closed <laughs> okay, yeah. but we will appreciate your financial support. And like I said, if you go on the, um, if you go on our, our page, and you can also see on the screen right now, uh, how you can be a financial support. And if you're a corporate organization and you would like to be part of this uh, outreach, you can kindly uh, reach us on our email, on our um, on our email, mm -hmm. or you can call our phone number and then we'll tell you how we can be partners in progress. This time around, instead of going to one community, usually we've done several communities before, but this time around we are going to reach about five different communities and overall we are looking up, up to reaching about 5,000 children or thereabouts and so we need a lot of money and usually we do health education, we do nutritional assessments, we do the uh, uh, we, we do medical consultation, pediatric consultation, dental uh, consultation and treatment, free drugs, free food, entertainment for the children. So we always use it as a way of reaching the indigent communities around us. And so we really appreciate sure. if you can be part of this. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Boride. Thank you for, for coming on our show today. We had fun with you. We learned a lot. And then we're happy that we have someone like you helping Nigerian moms, Nigerian dads, or rather global moms and dads, and um, helping yeah. indigent Nigerian children. Okay, so um, we'll be rounding off our show for today. Thank you, viewers, for joining in.
okay, someone just... Uh, that question is not about newborn. It's talking about a five-year-old growing bright. So as much as possible, try and ask questions related to the topic. Um, but this kind of question, please drop it on our Facebook group, and then we sure we'll be able to do justice to it. Thank you. Yes. All right. So um, thank you so much, Dr. Boride. Thank you, viewers, for joining us live today. Um, we'll be here again next week with another exciting topic, and you sure would, would have fun learning. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.